Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. Yep. And I did not come back to the model table yesterday afternoon or evening and do any videoing. So I can't turn my cup like this and say let's roll back because there, there is no rollback again. Two days in a row now. Yeah. I'll turn it this way. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I did come back to the to the model table. I uh, I gave the the inside of our life rafts a coat. I gave the outside a second coat. I'm debating on whether I should go around and do the the inside. I was noticing on this one here when I was doing the second coat on the outside, I got it down onto the inside. So I'm thinking maybe I should go over the inside one more time. I'll just quickly do that with the 66. Uh, I like the contrast between the two grays. It sort of gives the, a little bit of definition to the to the life raft. That's just my opinion. Uh, not as much as when I did the ones on the, I can't remember, it was the hood or the Bismarck where I painted the outside yellow. And they really stood out, but they looked like something that would be on a cruise ship, not a battleship. So it wasn't very correct, if you know what I mean. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that's on my battleships is not correct. Uh, okay. I'm not going to get into the controversy about uh, whether if you take a battleship and out of the out of the water if it'll s slowly start to collapse and pancake down. I don't know if you've been watching the reading the comments, but uh, there, I, there's what I believe is a myth going around that if you take a, a battleship out of the water and put it on 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 a pe on a ped pedestals or whatever, or or just even set it on its keel. That that it it that you can't have it in such a way that you know it can't be supported so that it won't collapse. Well, think about it. Have you seen these pictures of the Texas and dry dock? Is it collapsing? Think about it. I mean, think this through. Um, I think that these people are saying you have to have a battleship in the water for it to last. They just like to have it in the water, and they're going to find any reason why it can't be not in the water. <laughs> uh, my my opinion is that it's going to slowly dissolve. I mean, you're going to start having to re replace the bottom or the, the sides in the bottom that's in the salt water because of corrosion. And eventually, you're not going to have the same ship. It's going to be, it's going to look the same, but it's not going to be the same one. Whereas if you take it out of the water and, and uh, you know, support it where it's supposed to be, uh, it'll last a lot longer, but that's just my opinion. What do I know? I'm just a, an old model maker making plastic models. Uh, but like I originally said, I think it's a case of these people that are saying you can't do this. It's it's a case of they like to see it in the water, and they're going to tell you anything. <laughs> On the other hand, I like to have it have it out where I can take my walker and go around the outside and and uh, walk underneath it and get reach up and touch the rudder. <laughs> anyway, uh, where are we going here? Let's, uh, well, we can't roll back, so I guess we'll just sort of get right into it. Oh, there's the, the sunrise this morning. It, uh, I don't know if I'll show it to you later or not. I'll try and remember. It, it sort of peeked through for a moment. I, I actually saw it about 15 minutes ago. It was sort of sort of peeking through the clouds. But uh, if you look outside right now, uh, well, it's uh, fall is coming here in Winnipeg. 11.4 Celsius outside right now. Yeah. Australia's getting hotter and we're getting colder. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get into today's episode and uh, yeah, I think I think I will give the bottom of these a, a second coat just very lightly. Like the paints I've been using, in case you're wondering, they are the thinned out versions. Okay, uh, I, I know that if I was to take and uh, I could probably get away with just doing one coat if I used the unthinned paint and put it on really thick. 
but I don't like to do that because uh, then when the paint evaporates, it doesn't shrink wrap around all the detail. Right now I've got detail there. It's almost as good as, uh, as if I had a... Uh, oh, I'm not supposed to talk about an airbrush anymore. So we won't, we won't, we won't talk about that. Uh, okay, let's get at it. Okay, I have given the, uh, the inside of these 12 pieces uh, the second coat. This is the one that I showed you at the beginning of today's episode where I had said that uh, I had gotten a little bit where it's not supposed to go. Uh, when I was painting the outside, I got the dark gray down. Well, you can see it there, even with the uh, white angle lens on. Anyway, we, we will slip on the uh, macro in a second here. And uh, I was going to use my, my little brush for, for going around, uh, but I didn't. I, I used my, uh, well, this is a little brush as well, but it's huge compared to, to, to this one. Anyway, I, I'll show you how I, how I did it using this brush. And then after these are dry, probably in about two or three hours, they're still kind of wet on the bottom, especially some of them where it got a little bit, maybe you might say too heavy. In fact, you can, you can see on this one here where I had, uh, it's still a little bit heavy, but I uh, tried to get paint off of the brush so I could sort of uh, absorb some of the excess, and I, I got most of it. But I think you will be surprised at how well the definition of the bottom of this raft will come out. We should be able to find this one. It's, it's got the more along the outside than uh, any of the others. Where's uh, Tennessee Jim's pen here? Okay, we'll just make an X on it. Doesn't want to write too good on on that uh, paper, but it does. Anyway, uh, all right, we got it. So we'll look at this one again after it's dried out. And uh, like I say, I think you'll be surprised at how, how well the definition comes out. Um, okay, let's uh, get our macro lens going here and uh, paint that. Okay, I can imagine now that because I've pressed record, I'm going to make a fool of myself. But right here at this end, you, you can see where I've come down with the 77 onto the 66. So I just go like this. Just sort of, you might say, flooded on up to the edge. Now the shadow from the spotlight is uh, Kind of making it a little bit harder here for me. Some of these spots that I'm doing right now, they, they really don't need a second coat, but... There are little bubbles forming there. Be careful when I'm coming back like this that I that I don't uh, accidentally touch touch this end here. So I'll swing it around and come the other way. Maybe I should be getting uh, fresh paint on my brush too. No, I think I got that. Yeah, once that dries, it's going to be okay. We'll we'll take a look at this one too close up after. I might have gone a little bit heavy right there. But I don't think I can absorb that without maybe going up the side. But I don't think we're going to be we're, not, we're going to be seeing that. Now remember, don't scrub it because this paint will uh, the first coat will come off. Now there's something I thought I'd better explain here. I'm sure a lot of you know, but there might be somebody new that's watching that would not know why did I call this Tennessee Jim's pen. Well, it's not 
really Tennessee Jim's pen. I actually made it. But the wood that you see here, Tennessee Jim sent me several years ago. And uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, black palm wood from a palm tree. Very, very unique wood. Most unusual wood I ever used in any of my woodworking uh, endeavors. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's why I called it Tennessee Jim's pen. But it really, like I say, I actually made it. Okay, so we'll check those two out. Okay, these are the pieces that we need to complete step 41. Nothing has to be painted, nothing has to be bent into shape, it's all ready to be more or less dropped down. Now these, these little boxes here, don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a little, like a little X on, on one side, but it's not on the other side. This is where the piece of photo etch was attached to, to the side, and I have to watch, I don't think it'd be the end of the world if I got it wrong, but this one here, the X faces in this way, and this one here, because you can't see it, it must mean it faces this way. Uh, I, I think that's supposed to represent a door or something. We'll move in closer and we actually do it. Now, we've already put the boats on once, but I didn't get them, I had them too far ahead, I should have, to have them further back. Before I actually apply any glue onto these uh, boat mounts and, and glue them in place so they don't fall off, um, I'll, I'll make sure that, that I've got them right. Um, and if they're, you know, a couple of millimeters one way or the other out, um, as long as it looks right, it's right. Okay. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about this, this boom right here that, that goes, uh, uh, that hooks onto the front of the mast right here that you can't see. Uh, we, we should be able to get that on afterwards. And if, if need be, if I find that because the it doesn't seem to work out too well because of the boats well, then I will redesign where it hooks on the the the, the bracket uh, so that it can be at a bit of an angle and maybe suspended by a piece of something that will represent a cable. Um, <clears throat> there there are uh, uh, pulleys right here, three pulleys that are designed to support stuff like that. So uh, we, we should be able to make it look reasonably believable. But this, that sort of thing will be towards the end. The, the rigging will be the last thing I do, even after the, the railing is put on. Um, but there's no railing in this step. I was noticing though on the next page there is. I don't know if we're going to get to turn to it today or not. I do have other things I have to do today. Um, yeah, I gotta go. I'm gonna go help my neighbor get the groceries here in about oh, uh, 20 minutes, and uh, then later on I have to go and have um, blood tests done. So um, you know, I've got other things that I want to do, <laughs> and some of them that I have to do. Um, okay, let's uh, recompose here, and uh, what what is going to be easy to do? Let's let's take these. Uh, these things here and try and figure out where they go. I am not seeing any markings on the deck where this is supposed to actually go, but I'm pretty sure that if I drop it right there it'll be within a couple of millimeters it's um, kind of go just a little bit straighter like that I, as near as I can tell it's supposed to go right up against the, that bulkhead where it is and the door is supposed to be to the right all right let's uh, somehow get some glue under that Okay, I was just noticing when I looked in the mirror a moment ago with it uh, right underneath here on the other side on the splinter wall, I obviously missed a little bit when I was painting that. 
not something you really don't see unless you get the, the macro lens just at the right angle. Now I'm just trying to straighten this out a little bit here. It's 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 not quite right. It's not it's not square with the with the ship in other words. But I do believe that it's it's in the right position this way. And as far as I can as far as I know it's supposed to be right back against that bulkhead. Now what I've got here is extra thin in the syringe. And I'm hoping it's going to wick its way underneath. Okay. Let's just let that meld. Okay, now the other one, the door faces the other way which makes sense and it gets dropped in right back here but not like that I guess when I said dropped uh, I didn't mean it literally Pretty sure that's right, right up against that wall, and I guess this would be the the uh, ammo locker probably for for this gun. At least I'm guessing that's what it is. of the paint job there. Okay about uh, five minutes has passed here now and that extra thin is dried. I don't know why I'm worried about it but I'm just going to take a little bit of the 77 here and just sort of paint over that. When this dries it, it should blend right in. Now I think that the number 66 gray that I put on here earlier this morning is probably probably dry. Why can't I pick that up? There we go. Um, at least to the place where I, if I accidentally touched it, it's not going to come loose. Now these these uh, you know these pegs on the bottom they go into these two holes, two holes here, and two holes here. Now it's kind of too bad. It's going to this one is going to cover up the detail of those that piping that goes up there. I just want to do a bit of a dry run here to see how how badly uh these are going to fit. So try and grab hold of it so that I can get it on the side. Now I know you can't see the pegs, but I can. I'm looking sort of edge edge along here. I, uh, I'd like to let gravity be my friend here and turn this whole thing on its side, but there, they're, they're actually, they're actually in, sort of. Um, okay, let's try this one on the, uh, on the other side. Okay. Whoops. I may have to uh, do this off camera. Uh, the the uh, camera is sort of right in my way and I'd like to be able to come in at a different angle, so yeah.
Okay, that's going to work. Um, I think the kind of glue I should use is a, uh, is a thicker glue that isn't going to run. And um, This one doesn't want to fit too good because of the Okay, that that that's actually that's actually in place right now. Uh yeah, we're going to put something really thick right in there. Um maybe the Revell contacta. Now, a moment ago, I accidentally put glue in the other two portholes, or uh, <laughs> not portholes, but uh, you know what I mean. And uh, so that was kind of stupid. Oh, how much repainting am I going to have to do now? Maybe none. Maybe none. Looks like it's, the number 77 is a little bit thin right there. Wonder how that happened. I was sure I'd done a second coat. Okay, let's uh, reposition a little bit here. Okay, I may have gone a little bit uh, too liberal with the glue there. But what else is new, right? And here we go. I'm hoping that what's hap going to happen is where those pipes go up behind the uh, flat area of the it'll sort of meld, you know, sort of squish them. I, I think that once this contact uh, cures, it's uh, or dries. Yeah, I think it's going to be all right. Now let's see if I can just carefully touch that up there. And I'm noticing I've got a little bit of a shiny spot right there. That could be from my finger. I think that should dry flat. Okay. Let's reposition and see if we can get some boats down. That's all there's left in this step. There, now I can get in there a little easier. I don't break something here now. Now, according to the manual, the center support is supposed to come right about at the center of the of the hull. Let me check the uh, monitor. How does that look from the side? Um, yeah, that, that looks about right. Something like that. And then the other, the other one that has the uh, the steam powered one. Because it doesn't matter which one I take here.
and uh, I know in real life you would not be holding it by the chimney or the smokestack once again this is supposed to come approximately mid at midpoint. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be wanting to go down properly. Am I being held up by mushroom vents here? No, I'm not. I'm sort of I can sort of, I'm looking down right in here and I can see them and I'm not really I'm very, very close, but I'm not against them. Well, it's going to have to do, I guess. Then the other ones. They are supposed to go on the top of here, but there is no brackets or anything like that to mount it properly. So I'm going to probably have to make something up. I, I imagine I could probably use some sort of thick cement, and it would, but I, I think I'm going to make something up out of a little extruded sprue or something like that to just sort of lay on each side of the keel of this one here. At least that's the plan right now. Okay, I'm going to try and get these these uh, four boats down. There's uh, two two like this on each side, and uh, then we'll we'll take a look and see see what we can do. Okay, the boats are on. They're about as on as they're going to get. And uh, what I did was those little ones that are on top of the others, I uh, glued them the keels down onto the thwarts. Um, with with uh, Ravel Contacta, and uh, yeah, I, I I know that's not the way it would have been. There would have been some sort of brackets going on there, and the idea of the paintbrush is just to just to hold everything level, uh, so that so that uh, until the glue dries. Anyway. Okay, let's move on. Okay, these two life rafts are the two in question that I said we'd take a close look at later, and I'm guessing it's about three hours ago that we, you know, did the second coat there, and I was saying, you know, you'll be surprised at how well the detail comes out after it dries. So, so let's uh, stick our macro lens on and just have a quick close look. Okay, step 41 is done. Step 42. Okay, more life rafts go on the sides. Uh, and uh, those little boxes, they go on mirror image, I guess, to what we just did. There is going to be some photo etch that we're going to have to bend. Uh, and this time I want to remember to paint it before I stick it down, but I think I will. Now, about the sunrise, I still haven't seen it yet, but if it's uh, reasonably interesting, I'll stick it at the end of today's episode. If there's nothing there, you'll know it wasn't worth looking at. Okay, thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.